Hi guys, it's Seal Inspector here. In today's video, we'll be showing you guys how to find the best overclock settings for GPU mining. This guide will apply to all coins that can be mined with a GPU. Basically put, overclocking is a way of pushing more work out of your GPU. To do this, we have to increase the clock rate of your GPU to a higher speed than it was designed to run at. People will use overclocks in gaming to achieve higher frame rates or better graphics in a game. Miners, on the other hand, will use overclocks to achieve a higher hash rate per second. In recent years, overclocking has become very easy to do, with many programs offering options to overclock GPUs. Today's video will be using MSI Afterburner, as it's probably the most popular overclock software. However, the principles are the same no matter what overclock software you're using. I have had great experiences with the EVGA Precision software and the NVIDIA GPU-Z software so you can use these as well to overclock. So here we have the main menu for MSI Afterburner. I'll explain what these controls are, but I want to make one thing clear about overclocking. This is that you shouldn't just copy overclock settings from people that have the same graphics card as you. Every graphics card is unique and will have so-called sweet spots where the card performs at its top efficiency. This will differ even if you have two of the exact same cards. One of them could have a better silicon lattice than the other so it would be able to produce a higher hash rate than the other one. What I'm saying is that you have to find what works best for your personal card. Now, let's get into the main part of the video, and that is the overclocking. This is the main menu for MSI Afterburner. You can change this design, but this is the default one, so we'll run through this quickly, as it's the most common design. First at the top, we have the power limit. This just negates how much power your card can draw from the power supply. For example, if you have a card that has a max draw of 200 watts, you can lower your power limit to 80%, then the card can only draw 80% of that power, which in that case would be 160 watts. Under the power limit is the temperature limit. This is directly linked to the power limit, so if you change the power limit, it also changes the temperature limit. Normally if a card starts to hit the temperature limit, then it will throttle, which is basically means it's too hot to sustain the card's performance. This will lead to either crashes or safety shutdowns of your GPU. Under the temperature limit, we have the two main sliders. These are the core clock and the memory clock. These are the two sliders that will give us a higher hash rate on your card. So, a graphics card has two main components. First is the GPU chip, and second is the VRAM. The GPU chip speed is controlled by the core clock, and the VRAM speed is controlled by the memory clock. This is why these sliders are the most important ones, because they control the main components of the graphics card. The last slider is the fan slider. This controls how fast your fans spin. So, when it comes to mining, efficiency is the main thing that we should look at, as it determines how much power is used per mega hash. The higher the efficiency, the lower the cost of electricity, and therefore you can make more profit. The efficiency of the card can normally be found on the miner at the end of the card information, as shown here. So, to start overclocking, I open up the miner. This screen is just a zoomed in version of the miner so you can see it better. This displays the information of the miner, such as the mega hash, the watts, and the efficiency. Also, it displays the temperature. The first thing I do in MSI Afterburner is to up the fans to around 75%. This allows for the temperature to not get too hot while we start overclocking. We will also come back to the fans at the end, so keep this in mind. Now secondly, let's play around with the power. So right now we're sitting at 215 watts at 100% power. I like to take the power down in increments of 10%. The efficiency right now is at 149 kilo hash per watt. And we have a mega hash of 32.09. So I lower the power to 90%. As you can see in the minor, the power dropped to 193 watts and the efficiency went up to 166. If we lower it by another 10%, then the power drops to 172 watts, and the efficiency goes up to 186. I keep lowering the power until the efficiency starts to go down. This happened when I hit 70% as the hash rate dropped and the efficiency dropped from the previous 80% power limit. Once you find the best settings for the power limit, which is in my case 80%, then you move on to the core clock settings. So this is the basic principle for overclocking. You raise or lower the slider until you find the best efficiency for your cards. So let's now adjust the core clock sliders. I like to do this in increments of 50. So we'll up it plus 50 and this gives us a hash rate of 35.63. And 
a higher efficiency of 203, which is better than when the core clock was at zero. Now, if we further up it to plus 100, we get a hash rate of 37.23 and efficiency of 209, which is better than before. I continue this by adding 50 every time. This gives me an efficiency of 218. And then I add another 50 and the core clock gives me an efficiency of 228. Lastly, I add another 50 and the efficiency drops to 221. Therefore, the best settings for the core clock would be around the 200 plus mark. Now, let's move on to the memory clock. Now, I'm not sure how many people do this, but I prefer to minus the memory clock when mining. I've seen people up their memory clock and it can produce the same results. The reason I choose to minus from the memory clock as it produces the same hash rate, but the graphics card does less work. Therefore, in theory, you would extend the life of the card as it's doing less work, but producing a higher hash rate. So I choose to minus the memory clock by 50 each time. I'm just gonna run through this quickly for the memory clock. At minus 50, we had an efficiency of 230. At minus 100, we had an efficiency of 239. At minus 150, we had an efficiency of 244. Minus 200, we had an efficiency of 248. And then finally, I got to minus 250 and the efficiency dropped to 237. So the best memory clock number is around the minus 200 range. When I say that you should go up and down or increments of 50, I mean this just to find a rough estimate for the core clock or the memory clock. I then use this estimate to narrow down a final number. So let's say we know that the best core clock setting is between 200 and 250. I would then repeat the process and start at plus 200 and move up in increments of plus 5 to find the very best setting. So lastly, let's move on to the fans. When it comes to the fans, it's more of a personal preference. So if you want your cards to run hotter, then you can lower the fan speed. There is normally a safe range that the card can do work at. This is normally around 65 to 70 degrees and under. If you want your car's lifespan to be longer, then I'd keep the temperature in the high 40s to low 50s. I run my fans next to an open window so they get an added breeze that cools the cars as well. However, if you don't have access to a window, then I would run the fans a little quicker so you don't damage the card. I normally have my fans at around 80%. Remember, you can always replace the fans for cheap, but the card itself won't be as cheap as the fans to replace. Therefore, if you need to run the fans at 100% to keep the temperatures low, then I would definitely do that over letting them run hot. So this is my method I use for overclocking my cards. This can be applied to any mining program as it accounts for trying to get the best efficiency at the highest number. It also is important that you leave your cards running for a while after overclocking. This allows for you to see if the card is stable. If the card starts to get dramatically hotter or the hash rate drops, then the card is not stable at that overclock setting. Then you have to go through the process again and find the right settings. Now, if you start to see stale shares in your miner, this could be linked to the overclocking as well. As a rule of thumb, I allow a certain amount of stale shares as they sometimes do occur. I put this number at one stale share per 200 shares mined. This gives us a percentage of 0.5 stale shares. Another fix to a stale shares problem is to look at your personal ping to the server you're mining on. If that is the problem, then I suggest you find a different mining pool that has a lower ping for you. So there we have it, my guide to overclocking. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have found your best overclock settings. If you guys have any problems with your overclock settings, please leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer it. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more content like this in the future.